Hello and welcome to the 3 minute Quran study, the place where we are not afraid to challenge an outdated narrative. Last time we learned about an alternative way of spelling words with an elongated letter A. In the Sa'ana manuscript, places with an elongated letter A are preceded by a little tick which would nowadays be pronounced as E. That way of spelling soon fell out of favor. However, it didn't fully disappear with astonishing implications. But before we can delve into this, we need to take a quick detour and look at how there are systematic rules between related languages. Let's use an analogy which works for Western ears. English and German are related languages, descending from the same linguistic ancestor. But as these two languages evolved, sounds shifted into different directions. These changes typically happen uniformly and patterns emerge. For example, the German language went through a so-called consonant shift during the early Middle Ages, a development that the English language didn't make. As a result, there are systematic differences between German and English words. For instance, in German, the letter P shifted to PF. Whereas in English, we still have words like apple or plow. In German, they are now pronounced as apfel or pflug. Similarly, German replaced the TH sound with a D sound. English words like thorn or brother are now translated as dorn or border. There are of course many more shifts and examples, but you get the idea. Something very similar has happened with the Semitic language family. Hebrew, Aramaic and Arabic are all related and just like with German and English, there are patterns for how sounds in one language relate to another language. Yet there are some Arab words that stick out. These words do not follow the same patterns for sound shifts that we would expect. Something strange must have been going on there. The examples we want to look at today are Abraham and Satan. In Arabic they are pronounced as Ibrahim and Shaitan. When we look at the Arabic spelling we find something that should be familiar to us by now. Both of these words have that little tick which we have seen in the Sana'a manuscript. If we assume that we are dealing with the same phenomenon, namely that the tick does not indicate an E sound but an elongated letter A, then all of a sudden the pronunciation of these words fit into the pattern of the Semitic languages. Instead of Ibrahim, we would now read Ibraham. And since the early script didn't have any vowel markings, the initial Aleph can also be read as an A instead of an I. Now it reads Abraham. Similarly, instead of Shaitan, we can now read Shatan. And again, without the little dots, the letters for S and SH look identical. So we can reconstruct the word Satan. From a linguistic standpoint, the reconstructed readings for these words fit in perfectly with a continuum of Semitic languages. Hence, we are likely looking at examples for early misreadings. When the spelling system with a little tick for an elongated letter A was dropped, Arabs could still correctly read the word Ilaha, which we looked at last time, and they simply removed the tick. However, the names of Abraham and Satan were not correctly remembered, and the scribes didn't know that the tick must be removed. What's worse, they even misread the initial letters for both Abraham and Satan, proving that there was no oral tradition at the beginning of the Quran, quite the opposite. It all started with a written text. The origin of that text is what we will be looking at in more detail in the upcoming videos. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.